There are enterprising teenagers, the beautiful Alexandra Daddario, and a wild babysitting service for desperate and bored husbands. Hello! Today, we'll talk about a 2007 drama movie called The Babysitters. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. The film starts with Shirley showing off her successful babysitting business. You can see it's such a hit that they even babysit grown men. Oh, alright, this is not your regular babysitting business. It's a full-fledged escort service provided by money-hungry teenagers, for men bored with their married life. While it did start with babysitting, Shirley's business evolved into something bigger and more dangerous. Now she isn't a teenager abused by her parents or has an uncle named Steve that likes to show her his thing. No, she's an intelligent and hard-working high school girl doing her best to get into college. So, how did things end up this way? Well, it all starts with this guy, Michael. He's Shirley's number one fan. I mean, number one customer for babysitting. Yes, it's the real babysitting job for now. Michael usually hires Shirley to babysit whenever he has to take his wife Gail out to keep their boring married life going. During one of those dates, things don't go so well between Michael and Gail. He tries to be funny and bring excitement to their lives, but Gail shuts him down. While on his way that night to drop Shirley off after she babysits, they stop by to grab some food. While eating, the two start getting closer to each other. Mostly it's because Shirley seems interested in Michael. Since he doesn't feel like returning to his boring wife yet, Michael takes Shirley to an abandoned train yard. He shows her around the place until cops on patrol arrive. They quickly hide inside a nearby shed. Feeling the heat of the moment, the two fail to keep their thirst in check. They share a kiss, an awkward pause, and a final chance to do the right thing. Of course, they both throw that chance out the window and cross the bridge of no return. Why not, right? Depressed husband and thirsty babysitter? How could this not happen? Anyway, Michael feels guilty about what happened, so he pays Shirley more money for her extra services. When Shirley gets home later, she starts contemplating her decisions in life, and Michael does the same thing. They spend the next few days spacing out and thinking about each other. One evening, Shirley and Michael lock eyes in a local cafe. Shirley then gets surprised after Gail appears out of nowhere to ask her to babysit for them again. She probably agreed because the next thing we know, Michael is already showing her who's her daddy. Both of them seem to not care about their white van adventures anymore. They only focus on enjoying the moment and each other. Like last time, Michael pays Shirley more money for her extra services. When she gets home, she writes the word trouble on the uppermost bill of Michael's payments and hides it under her mattress. The next day at school, Shirley's friend Melissa notices something is off with her. Shirley claims she's just tired from all her babysitting work and tells Melissa she earned $200 that night. Surprised, she pokes fun at Shirley about giving Michael head to get that much money. It doesn't take long for Melissa to realize that her friend is doing exactly that and even more. She gets angry at her for not sharing such private information with her. After all, she is her best friend and has always told Shirley everything that happened in her life. Driven by guilt or a strong desire to show and tell, Michael eventually tells one of his friends about Shirley's babysitting services. Of course, he doesn't want to get left behind, so he asks Michael to hook him up with the same services. Michael tells Shirley about it, and Melissa does her first babysitting job that night. Unlike Shirley, Melissa is more aggressive, and her customer loves it. Once done babysitting, Shirley and Melissa meet up at the cafe to discuss what happened. After that, Shirley asks Melissa for a 20% cut of her earnings. She reasons it's only fair because she's the one that facilitated the transaction. Melissa understands and happily gives her friend her share. During a party sometime that week, Shirley and Melissa look for another girl to add to their roster. Their business is starting to pick up, and they're running short on babysitters. They decide to let their friend Brenda in on their babysitting gig. After the party, Shirley and Michael hook up in her room. It seems she wants to wash away the taste of an immature boy's kiss from her mouth. Their lovey-dovey time gets interrupted by Shirley's father, and Michael finds the stash of money that Shirley hid under her mattress. Meanwhile, Brenda's first babysitting job is off to a bad start. She seems hesitant to do what the job needs. The customer panics and controls his aggression. He then shows his sensitive side towards Brenda. She gets touched by the gesture, so she lets him have his way with her. Shirley and Melissa meet up with Brenda after her babysitting job. Of course, Shirley asks Brenda for her cut and she receives it. After that, Brenda gets added to Shirley's roster of teenage babysitters. From there, the babysitter's schedule gets busier as more customers book their services. One night, Michael starts getting insecure because more men know about Shirley's babysitting service. Michael tries talking her out of her business, but she doesn't listen to him. After their argument, Shirley hits Michael with a good old price hike. Instead of $200, the men now need to pay $300 for the babysitting services. The next day, Brenda decides to help her stepsister Nadine earn some cash on the side by letting her babysit on her behalf. When Shirley later asks for her cut, Nadine shows resistance before giving Shirley her share. 
In the next few days, Shirley's business starts slowing down and they start figuring out what's happening. It doesn't take long for her to discover that Nadine is doing business behind her back and stealing her clients. Nadine's clientele quickly grows because of the aggressive nature of her girls. While Shirley gave Brenda and Nadine the benefit of the doubt, she eventually decided to take action against them. Shirley, along with Melissa and Michael, goes to their school that night. While Michael tries to talk the two girls out of their crazy plan, an impulsive Melissa pries open Nadine's locker. Michael and Melissa bicker with each other while Shirley contemplates their situation. Realizing Nadine will probably implicate them for breaking her locker, Shirley decides to trash everything in school to cover their tracks. I guess that's one way of doing it. It looks like a lot of work, but okay. Oh, and even Michael decided to help since he has nothing to do anyway. The next day, Shirley confronts Nadine and her girls at school. She tells them never to do business behind her back again. After seeing what she's capable of, Nadine and her girls submit to Mistress Shirley for now. Once the confrontation is over, Melissa says Shirley needs a vacation. It turns out that Melissa wants to go on a working vacation. She says that Jerry has a cabin they can use for their trip. The teenage girls make up a story about going on a school trip. Meanwhile, the men tell their wives they'll be going on a business trip. When the weekend arrives, the babysitters and their customers let their lust run wild in Jerry's cabin. With so many customers, Shirley also services other men. Michael sees this and becomes uncomfortable with other men touching his babysitter. To ease his jealousy, Shirley makes love to him a lot. Meanwhile, Jerry supplies drugs to everyone in the cabin. He then pounces on Brenda once the drugs take effect on her. Despite her objections, Jerry tries forcing himself on her. Unfortunately for him, Brenda starts crying for her mother, so Jerry starts losing interest. Later that week, Brenda decides she no longer wants to babysit. Shirley tells her she's free to go, but Melissa isn't comfortable with the idea. She thinks Brenda will talk and expose them all. Melissa asks several of their frequent customers to attack and threaten Brenda's brother. Shirley learns about this and gets angry at Melissa. In her defense, Melissa explains she is only looking out for her. It seems Melissa is concerned that Shirley will no longer have someone to watch her back when she graduates. Meanwhile, Gail confronts Michael for putting space between them recently. She also confronts him regarding his lies about his job. Michael finally expresses how he feels about their marriage, and Gail does the same in response. Later that night, Michael tries to encourage Shirley to run away with him. She doesn't go with his plan. She says they can't just leave everyone they know behind. Shirley also takes time to remind him that their relationship is purely business. Michael gets angry because it looks like Shirley is only interested in money. While he tries to slap her with money, a cop arrives and their talk gets interrupted. Michael tells the cops he's alone and there because he loves trains. After thinking more about what happened between him and Shirley that night, Michael finally decides to walk away from their forbidden relationship and return to his family. Without a ride home, Shirley tries calling Brenda, but her brother is the one that picks up. He doesn't let his sisters talk to her and even reveals that Nadine is out babysitting. Shirley gets pissed after learning that Nadine is doing business behind her back again. She immediately calls Melissa, who turns out to be babysitting Jerry somewhere. After hearing the news, Melissa and Jerry pick up Shirley and go to where Nadine is doing her business. While Jerry isn't too happy about getting his fun time interrupted, he helps the girls out. After telling Shirley that she owes him big time, Jerry doesn't waste time and pulls Nadine out of an SUV. He then goes inside the vehicle and starts ground-pounding the man inside. Meanwhile, the girls confront Nadine for doing business behind their backs again. Pissed with what happened between her and Michael that night, Shirley goes extra rough with Nadine. Melissa does the same thing since she got blue-balled in the process. They take the helpless Nadine to the end of the parking lot and threaten to throw her off the building. Shirley then hears the moans of pain coming from the man that Jerry is beating up. She gets distracted because it sounds familiar and she loses her grip on Nadine. The girls almost drop Nadine off the building. Fortunately for them, Jerry arrives just in time to pull her up. While they catch their breath, a huge revelation unfolds in front of Shirley. It turns out that Nadine was babysitting Shirley's father that night. They look each other in the eye and immediately realize what's up. Unable to bear the idea of her father being a customer of her business, Shirley breaks down in tears. I guess this is what you'd call suffering from success, right? I think she should be proud that her dad is supporting her business. After some time passes, Shirley checks on how Michael is doing with his life. She sees him happy with his wife and kids. After looking at them for a while, they lock eyes and greet each other. Michael then walks off and Shirley goes back into her car. She then says that what happened between them is nothing more than a unique moment in her ordinary life. The movie ends after Shirley takes a deep breath and gets ready to drive off. Well, at least she got closure with her relationship. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.